I'm Chet Haas, an engineer on the Android team at Google. Today I'm going to show a demo that's a little bit more about um, motivating some of the techniques I've talked about in previous DevBytes episodes. Uh, I'll walk through some code, but it's going to be a pretty, pretty blistering pace because, frankly, a lot of the techniques in the code are ones that we've already talked about in the show. What I wanted to do with this application is instead motivate some of the techniques that I've talked about, specifically around cartoon animation. So it's a little bit hard when you click on a button and you see it fall down to the bottom of the screen and squish at the bottom to understand why you would want to do that in your application. Um, and frankly, most applications probably shouldn't do that. Maybe it would be a little disturbing or silly. Uh, but there are some applications that really want to be more engaging to the user, and it's worth understanding uh, a type of application that might want to use that to be more playful and engaging in general, more interactive with the user. So I wanted to show how to use some of these techniques that we've talked about in previous episodes, as well as in uh, uh, the talk at Google I.O. 2013 called A Moving Experience, to show how you want to use some of these cartoon animation techniques and put them all together in some larger example um, to give that more engaging feeling to the user. We're going to be showing things about anticipation, about overshoot, about exaggeration, um, and in general just being a little bit more fun, engaging, and playful. Uh, so let's take a look at the demo. So here we go. We get into the application and we've got this button that is bouncing. It's ready to go. It wants us to engage. So even while we're not interacting with the application, that's not a reason why the application can't be interacting with us. So it's trying to attract our attention here and then eventually we'll fall for it. We'll press on the button. This is a technique that we showed um, in some earlier episodes about uh, anticipation where when we click on the button, maybe it doesn't just have to change color. Maybe it can actually physically interact with the user and actually press in or press out to show that there's a physical interaction with the button actually going down um, as the user presses on it. So we press the button and then when we let go, watch carefully, uh, it's going to launch out and then just keep going. So it launches out toward the user and then we get into this other um, activity. And this is actually a separate activity. Again, this is a technique I talked about in a previous episode about custom activity animations. We're not running a window animation here, which has a standard way of running where things scale and fade in. Instead, we're disabling that and we're running a custom activity animation by automatically launching the sub activity with a white background. So it's fully opaque, but it's the same opaque background as the one we came from. But first, we basically animate the stuff to get out of the way, and then the sub activity launches with that same plain white background, and then the contents in that activity animate, they scale in. So we have this sort of continuous motion from the previous activity of launching, fading, and going past the user, and then the new content coming in with this custom activity animation. So now we're on the first screen here, and we have some things that look vaguely like buttons down at the bottom. And did you notice that they, they popped in? Everything here is about being more interactive and playful and alive in general. So we can click on one of these. We can say, OK. And, and it's very simple, too, right? It's just asking for your name. Not a lot going on here. Maybe the game is, is intended for kids, right? So you want to make it as simple and streamlined as possible. So we say, yep, I'm going to play. Uh, I'm the returning player called Pat. OK, what difficulty are you going to play? I am awesome at this game. I'm going to be mega hard. Now, notice when I press on the buttons, again, it's that same interactive thing. I press on the button, the button actually goes into the screen, away from the user, and then comes back out. That springs and overshoots, um, showing that interactive model of, of uh, engaging the user through actually interacting through the physical um, uh, presses and releases on the screen. So as I release the button, you're going to see the same thing you did on the previous screen, which is the button's going to launch out at the user and then animate into place at the top of the screen. Now you notice another element on all of these screens is the text is going to animate out. We have this sort of flow of the application going from right to left. Um, and we do this with a little bit of anticipation on the, on the text, again a technique that we saw in a previous demo, where the text will actually skew to the right and then shift to the left. This is like traditional cartoon animations where someone's going to run, but before they run, they're going to rear back and get ready, which really helps the user understand exactly what's about to happen, not just during the action, but actually before the action. We anticipate the text is going to anticipate the animation, and then it's going to shift quickly off the screen. And then finally, of course, you want to ask for the child's credit card number because um, that's where the real money is, right? So that's it. Uh, we can step through it again. You see the button. You see this sort of engaging, playful thing. You launch into the sub-activity here, pressing the buttons. The buttons are interacting. The text is skewing, sort of all this playful stuff. Let's take a very quick look at the code. There's a lot of code here, but again, the techniques are similar to techniques that we saw in these previous DevBytes episodes, so it's not worth belaboring these too much. Um, so we have tune game. This is the main activity. 
Um, we're listening for touches on the button, uh, and when we get one, uh, we're going to um, we're going to animate the scales so the button scales into the screen away from the user. And when they release, um, we're going to trap that here, and we're going to uh, launch. Uh, we're going to animate back to the regular scale thing, um, but then we're also going to perform the click operation, which is going to go into the sub activity. Um, so that is down. Here, uh, so when we play, we're going to animate. Um, we're going to keep scaling the button out from where it was. So it's going to scale, and it's also going to fade out at the same time and come out toward the user. Uh, and then, um, when uh, it's done, we're going to launch the the sub activity. This new intent. We're going to start the activity. We're going to override the pending transition. I don't want window animations here. I'm already doing my custom activity animation. So you get the window animations out of the way with overriding pending transitions with zero. Uh, and then it launches the sub activity, which is this player setup activity here. Player set, uh, uh, setup activity um, has various elements, a lot of code in here, not worth going into. Again, same techniques all over the place in here. Uh, we have the button press listener, so when you click on one of these things, it's going to scale in when you release, it's going to scale back out um, uh, to where it was. And then when a button is clicked, it's going to animate into place. Uh, up at the top of the screen. Now, I didn't simply want to pop that view out from where it was because the layout would have been affected by that. Instead, I'm going to set that invisibility there um, in its previous state, and then I'm going to create a copy of that button and animate that in a parent container uh, as I move that in sort of this virtual curve of scaling out and then scaling back down um, into place at the top of the screen where it's going to live. Uh, then the, the text skewing animation, um, again, we've seen this. Uh, in previous demos, that happens in this custom uh, text view subclass I have here called skewable text view. Uh, we're going to animate the skew property of the text as it skews to the right and then shifts over to the left. Um, and that happens by simply animating the skew value, invalidating appropriately, also invalidate the parent around the area of the skew so we actually erase and redraw the appropriate um, area. Uh, and that's the utility method for doing that. And that's about it. There's a lot of code in here, but again, we went over the actual techniques of the, the code in detail in the previous uh, DevBytes episodes, so be sure to check those out, as well as the code for this application that should be available at a link on this YouTube video. Thanks.